Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today I'm going to show a small update on this setup. Uh, this setup can be seen in the previous video, which is my uh, boost motor built off second entry. But as you can see, I've made some changes. Um, the flywheel of the momentum wheel is now on this side of the drive wheel. And over here, on this side I have now a flux gate generator and uh, you have different versions of these I made this one of two ring magnets and in there you can see there's a wooden rotor there are four iron discs and also on this side they are alternating each other I have here a, a black tape and a piece of reflective tape to measure the RPM and I have here it's just a uh, yeah a test coil holder there's a coil in there so i can move it around put it in place or not and i have here a large led this one is rated 3 volt at 20 milliamps or 25 milliamps ah between 20 and 30. Uh, for the rest everything is still the same i'm running it from here which goes to my uh, DIY power supply, which is here is about 15 volts Still the voltage doubler over there Still the whole MOSFET uh, small transistor and There's a hole itself And uh, MOSFET uh, The same Same meters panel uh, Let me get it started because it does take a uh, pretty long time Here's a on and off switch down here. As you can see, it is starting now, and at this moment, it is pulling just above 200 milliamps, and the voltage is around 20, 20, 20. Uh, let me think over here 22, 4, 6, 28 volts. But when it reaches its highest RPM, uh, the voltage will be around 29.5, and the input is. Uh, let's say 50 milliamps or below Personally, I think it's below but I need a better meter like a half a amp meter I do have half a amp meters, but they are larger So it won't fit in this panel over here That's why I haven't changed it yet, but uh, I really need to do that uh, It is speeding up it takes a while so we're gonna I've done this test already the test I'm going to do. As you can see, the coil is now not in its position. With the coil, um, uh, I've written here coil in place. I mean, coil not in place. <laughs> yeah, no coil in place. Sorry, no coil in place. RPM. When the system is running and the coil is where it is now, the RPM will be 1890. When the coil is in place and the coil is open, no load, RPM will be still 1890. When I load it down with its LED, the RPM will drop, in my case, to 1885, so it's a drop of 15 RPM. On the input side, it is very difficult to see uh, any changes because 50 RPM doesn't affect the input at all. Maybe it, it is affecting it, but uh, it is not possible to see on a 3M scale meter. You really need like a 100 million meter for that. And when I short the coil, it drops the system to 875, which is 25 RPM drop. And also when shorting, you cannot see over here because it is a 3M meter system is going strong this why here is this lead of it is uh, for uh, shorting out the, the coil all my leads are stiff as this because uh, when you buy them there's a very tiny one wire in there I changed the oil to uh, 0 0.75 wires so it's much better let me check the RPM now to see where we are now as you can see, 
there's the RPM laser or the meter laser the RPM is now 7042 44 and climbing so we see and it is 1890 so like I said it does take its time it is still running pretty smoothly just a little bit of knocking is in this uh, bearing over here these bearings have been abused a little bit but uh, I do have spare ones which I'm not going to use yet give you a shot over here uh, the two wooden rotors are made are not perfectly uh, I would say that um, round they have a little bit of wobble in the vertical X not much just a tiny bit I think you can hear a little bit of the knocking if I put it over here yeah you can hear I think <laughs> running very nice and now you can see the input voltage is where it's supposed to be which is 29.5 and the input as you can see is um, yeah it's certainly below 50 milliamps which is very nice in this setup let me check the RPM again ah we're almost there a380 81 82 yeah it is going sadly enough the RPM is dependent on the efficiency of the bearing sometimes the bearing knocks more than uh, other times in this case it is less now so you can see I said over here RPM is 1890 but at this point it is running better than the test I did before I started measuring not measuring and uh, making this video and I'm already at 1903 RPM M4 M5 it's gonna be a little bit of a boring video because uh, we have to wait for it to reach its RPM Normally I would start it up and then make the video, but decide to let you folks off there see how long it does take before it reaches its highest RPM. And going back to the input, yeah, I don't think you can see that through the camera, but I can see that the needle of the 3 meter has dropped a little bit more, which is pretty, pretty, pretty nice indeed okay I hope we're there now so I can start the testing 1919 1920 still climbing a little bit yeah, yeah. you have to be very patient Okay, 1925. Now I'm going to put the coil in its place. I'm going to write down. We started with 19. Uh, what was it again? 1925. Now in my setup, I made a mistake in there. So if I put the coil directly between the disc, I have absolutely no input you see that nothing absolutely nada for me to get input or I mean sorry output from uh, the coil I need to put it on the edge of the disc here I have less less again the best output is just around here anymore and it will burn that uh, LED now I can only think of two reasons for that um, is uh, or the magnetic field of these um, two ring magnets is being bent 
upwards, which I don't think that is uh, happening, or the disc I have in there uh, doesn't. Um, I have four in each size, they are alternating, but uh, how you say that? There's not enough uh, time in between the disc that are act activating the coil. So, once again, put them directly in the part of the disc, no output. Put it on the edge, is the best output. Let's see what the RPM is doing now. I have here 1913 yeah 1913 RPM so coil plus LED is 1913 gonna do the coil in place open RPM uh, after I'm done with the rest because the, for that I have to remove the LED now I'm gonna short the coil like this this short it <coughs> and short it should make it drop even more in this case I think it will drop below the uh, 1900 uh, mark Ah, yeah, and the uh, input side try to hold the camera as steady as possible still 29 and a half and the input is ridiculously low um, yeah I would say it's around between 20 or 30 milliamps not more which is always a good thing and this is a pretty large boost motor and pretty heavy too but it has a lot of momentum and that's always a good thing the RPM at this moment 1912 hmm I expect it to go even lower it is still shorted 1913, 1912 shorted is 19 13 same as loaded with the LED bringing back the LED think I would uh, need to make uh, not I think I will make another meter panel and put over here a 500 milliamp meter uh, when the system start up it always pulses around between 200 and 250 milliamps so yeah, better would be one meter of 500 milliamps and the other one from 100 so I can switch but that would make this panel so large and in this case I don't like that. Let me check the RPM once more now that it's loaded with the LED. Now it's at 1919. LED is now 1919. Before it was 1913, so I think now that the the uh, top, the maximum uh, RPM, when I remove the coil, like this, will be now higher than 1925. So let's get it a little while for it to. Um, reaches that RPM give you a complete look of my uh, system and by the way I have an, uh, the other generator that was on that side which is this one as you can see in my hand I still have it over here gonna modify it gonna modify it um, in a few ways because that performance wasn't that bad uh, only thing I need is to get more output out of it and hopefully also with a little bit of uh, speed up on the load and uh, as you can see I'm now testing smaller coils 
but I made it so this uh, magnet over here I can move to over here so I can also test this coil larger ones so this setup is very flexible so I can do all kinds of tests and thus that is oak the reason I made it as it is now checking the RPM no coil in place yes the RPM is now 1941 so RPM is 1941 it is very important when you do tests that you really let your setup that you're running or your motor get to absolute the maximum speed it has otherwise you will not get uh, the results you will get the results but uh, not uh, reliable results I'm gonna put a coil again where it gives me the best output which is right around there I'm gonna show you in the dark the LED it's pretty it's pretty bright that's above it yeah it's really really bright So <laughs> now let's check the RPM one more time. I think this video is long enough now. 1932, 1930, yeah. 1931. Now I'm gonna remove this LED. Give me a second. I removed it and leave the coil in place there's the LED the coil is in place same spot but it's open and the RPM we're gonna write it over here um, RPM is now at this moment 1933 which is basically the same oops 33 which is the same as it was when it was loaded with the LED not really yeah just a few more RPM 1937 okay time to wrap this up meanwhile gonna disconnect it this is my on and off switch, it is off now. And let it spin away. So, when the coil is in place, the RPM is 1941. Where the coil is in place and it is loaded, sorry, with the LED, it's 1931. 10 RPM less than when it's uh, no coil in place. When the coil is in place and it is open, it's 1937. And shorten it is 1913 RPM. Yes. So it is a good test. Of course, it still uh, put this on drag and the load, but remember my coil uh, in a flux generator. It's supposed to be completely like that, completely covered. But because uh, the mistake I made, I'm putting over here, maybe that's the reason it is still dragging down my pulse motor. Okay, next step I will try to um, mm, remove that uh, problem or fix it. And we'll see how it goes. Hope you enjoyed it and as always, thank you for watching.